penis oh, flipping. <laughs> AIM. Okay. Next day, so we don't know what happens between there and there. You remember AIM? Yeah, I actually was thinking about that the other day. Yeah. Yeah. The AOL shit. Yeah, they just closed down. Yeah, well then. I was on they, like part they, of the like, They completely AOL. shut down. They they had to shut down AIM because nobody was on it anymore. Good. Yeah. Yes, ASL. I don't remember my first screen name, but I remember talking to a little boy. I was like maybe a Don the Third was my first screen name. Yeah, I don't remember. Sex me. Pistols 2K5. I just remember talking to somebody named Andy Anderson from Florida, and I just thought it was hilarious that his first and last name were basically the same thing. I'm like, you poor person. It was probably a pedo. <laughs> probably. No, thinking about that now. Yeah, mm-hmm. it probably was. Totally off topic. Whatever. All right. So now we're on to July 20th at one uh, eleven in the afternoon. Uh, CSM, which stands for Command Service Module, watch me fuck that up a couple times, and the LM, which means uh, Lunar Module, separate in order for the Lunar Module to land on the moon. The Command Service Module's job, piloted by Michael Collins, in this stage was to orbit around the moon and dock with the Lunar Module after it takes off from the moon's surface. The Lunar Module has had to get Neil Armstrong, the commander, and Edwin, Buzz Aldrin, uh, the lunar module pilot, to the lunar surface. His real name was Edwin? Yes, it says Edwin. That's a pretty fucking awesome What a name. fucking nerd. Edwin. <laughs> anyway. Where the fuck did he gain the name Buzz? Did he shave his wanna, balls? No, you don't want to know. It's probably from an electric vibrator on the ass. Yes. He, he got that name from his mother's drawer. <laughs> Okay. Fucked up family. Uh, yeah. All right. On to three seventeen the same day. So we're still looking at July twentieth, and the lunar module lands on the moon with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin inside. And then it skips down six hours. We're looking at nine thirty nine at night. The astronauts began to pl- the planned EVA, which is extravehicular activity. Oh, I hate that word. Which had them leave Hold on the- one second. Eli, get down, Eli, you podcat. No. Our podcat is on top of the counter. You get down, you get down from there. Eli, don't. You get, you, oh my god. Come here, fatty. You are the fattest cat down. in the fucking you, you world. You sit in the chair. Yeah, there you go. Sit, sit your chair. fat ass in the chair. What? In the chair. Get your... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, he's going to fall. Okay, there he is. He made it. Yay. Yay, Eli. Okay, so back to what we were doing. Yay. Uh, Six hours after they uh, officially touched the land of the moon, the astronauts began the planned extravehicular activity. Oh, I still hate that word. Which had them leave the safety of the lunar module and step on the lunar surface. After six hours of just sitting there, they finally decided to get off their ass and go look around. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they were doing a lot of shit. So 20 minutes later, July 20th, 1969, now we're looking at 9.56 p.m. The first step is taken on the moon by Neil Armstrong in the famous words, One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, were heard around the world. During the time after the test and the material collected or the material collection was done, Aldrin decides to salute the American flag. Next day, so a few hours later now, we're looking at 12.54. Oh, no, this is more than a few hours later. Now we're actually looking at lunchtime on July 21st. We're looking at 12.54 p.m. The lunar module lifts off from the lunar surface. So that means that, what, they're going back to Earth? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, okay, the so launch. They, that's, they literally stayed there for, like, five minutes and were like, okay, we're going to go now. That's what they were in the, that module that was specifically there to land on the moon, and then they ditch the rest of that module in space when they go and land on Earth. Gotcha. Okay, thank you for explaining. No, this is 4.34 p.m. Oh, I don't know. So the lunar module and the command service module dock again before making the trip back to Earth. You can say LM and CSM. A lot of people know what the hell that is. Yeah, but I don't, and I'm a simple-minded person. Okay. So I feel like I, I should probably, you know. You calling our listeners dumb? No, but I'm sure that there's others out there that are like me. <laughs> you calling them dumb? No, we're not calling you dumb. I, I didn't know what a CSM was until we actually hey, looked a it up. Hey, CSM to me so. is a customer service manager, so that's why it's throwing me the fuck Of course fuck it off. is. All right, so going on to July 21st, or still on July 21st, 
The docked um, spacecrafts enter the trans-Earth injection at 11.54 p.m., so almost midnight, uh, which set them on course for Earth. And then we skip ahead to July 24th. We don't hear again from them until 11.50 a.m., almost lunchtime. The Apollo 11 spacecraft splashes down into the Pacific Ocean, completing the successful mission of the Apollo 11 splashdown. On the 24th, we do have a mission celebration. People around the world, as well as those in mission control, celebrate the success of the Apollo mission. So this lasted from July 16th of 1969 through July 24th of 1969. How many days is that? Eight. eight. A yep. whole whopping eight And days. I correct myself from earlier. I said American Samoa in the Atlantic Ocean. It's actually in the Pacific. I fucked up there. Whoopsie. Whatever. Onward. We're not really known for our professionalism here. Excelsior. Okay. <laughs> Excelsior. Onward. All right, now we're going to get into the events that led up to the Apollo mission. The yeah. Apollo... God damn it, Eli. Podcat. Yeah. Jesus, fuck. What are you doing? You can't up. go no... Oh, my God. He's going to lay on the he's gonna. Up. He's going to lay... Jesus Christ. You're going to knock the mirror off the wall, you fat fuck. Jesus. If you could see this cat right now, holy shit. I'll take a picture. She's going to take a picture and put it on uh, Twitter, the twatter, and the... And the in, Instagram and, oh, and send it to Lance Armstrong, the astronaut, yeah. and Phil Collins, the astronaut. Ignore my mess on my desk, but I'll upload a picture. All right. Now, the events that led up to the Apollo 11 mission, not just to the Apollo missions period, just to Apollo 11. So there's some stuff about the first Apollo mission in here and everything like that. We're going to talk about what led up to Apollo 11 specifically. Because that was the the big one. Really, anything to do with space travel or any of the Apollo missions, any of the Gemini missions, any of the surveyor missions, any of the unmanned missions to the moon or to space, period, they only happened because of an operation done right after World War II, Operation Paperclip. Now, anything to do with space travel or the Apollo missions or the Gemini missions or anything that took us into space that got to do with rocketry or mathematics or anything like that, the only reason, the only reason that we were able to do any of that is because of Operation Paperclip. Now, Operation Paperclip was the plan to give former Nazis after World War II, former Nazis were given immunity if they would come to the U.S. and work for our military program. Now, this operation was put together by the Joint Intelligence Objectives Agency, which it was a brilliant plan, and in my opinion, a brilliant plan. Now, it was immediately following World War II, several of these Nazis were brought to the U.S. along with Werner von Braun and his V-2 rocket team, which that's basically the reason that we were able to go into space is because of... Warner Von Braun and his V-2 rocket team, because the V-2 rockets were the reason that we were able to make the Saturn V rocket, which the Saturn V rocket was the one that sent us supposedly to the moon. And it was the basis for every rocket that we sent into space. Now, 1,600 scientists were involved in this. The Germans are the ones that invented the V-2 rocket. Now, allegedly, Nazis had the technology to make it to space in the early 40s. So way ahead of us in Russia. There are crazy rumors out there. And I mean crazy, crazy rumors out there. That there was a Nazi base on the dark side of the moon. And that is where Hitler went. Oh, good lord. We did a Hitler's escape episode. And I did not include that uh, possibility. I said maybe he's hiding in my ass. Which is a good possibility. That's a better possibility than the dark side of the moon. I hide things there a lot. Oh my god. my prison pocket. I need my car keys. (laughs) That's why he had to get a new set. (laughs) (laughs) no (laughs) these scientists were extremely intelligent and had a vast knowledge of mathematics and rocketry substantially more advanced than the u.s at the time now there were many failures in the space program up until Apollo 11 a lot especially in the soviet union the soviet union did some terrible shit to people the terrible shit to humans period i mean i'm not saying the u.s is completely innocent But the Soviet Union did a lot of horrible shit. 
there was a lot of stuff that was covered up. There's stuff that we don't know about to this day, or we're not supposed to know about at least. There are several cosmonauts, because that's what they called their astronauts were cosmonauts. There were several cosmonauts that died over there. There's several that we didn't even know about. There's guys shot into space and left in space that the Americans, <laughs> once we started shooting stuff into space. Where are we shooting stuff? <laughs> oh, my dear Lord. I'm shooting it across the table today. Apparently. Jesus Christ. When we were shooting, come in her face. I mean, it was snot rocket. <laughs> All right. Thank God this computer's charged. But it was really bad. There was a lot of deaths, a lot of cover-up that happened. One Soviet cosmonaut that was sent into space and left there to die. Because we once we started shooting things into space... Keep yourself under control. Shooting things into <laughs> space. We decided to uh, basically attach microphones and cameras to these things that we were shooting into space, obviously. And we heard a very disturbing message from an object out in space of a man pleading for help saying there was a fire. And I could have gotten that audio for this, but I decided I didn't want to. There's other audio that I could have gotten for this episode that would have made it, I guess, a little bit more sexy, but I don't give a shit. We don't need to hear that shit. That sounded hor. I, di- I didn't feel good listening to it, so yeah, I'm not going to put it on the podcast, but... Yeah, it's really sad. There was, uh, yeah, the guy was begging for help and he was trapped in space, so. Well, I mean, at some point you'd have to starve to death, I'd assume. And that would be so horrible. Right. That'd be a horrible way to go out. Well, it, you, would die, is, you would die of not having water first. That is hashtag forever alone. Forever, forever alone. <laughs> On January 27th, 1967, Apollo 1 was doing a rehearsal run. This was one of the worst accidents, supposed accidents, in NASA history. Or was it an accident? There were three men that died when a spark was created by a frayed wire that instantly set the pure oxygen atmosphere inside the capsule on fire, burning them up within seconds. There is a recording out there. Again, this is another one. There's another recording out there of these guys screaming, there's a fire and we're burning. And Yeah, it's not pleasant to listen exactly. to. Exactly. That was another thing I could have put in here and I decided not to because I do not want you guys to hear that. If you want to go look it up yourself, you can just look up Gus Grissom because that was one of these guys. Look up Gus Grissom fire and I'm sure it'll show up. Yeah, but now, I'm not into that. Now, they couldn't open the door. That was another thing that was Let's wrong. just jump out and just turn into like the vacuum of space and die anyhow. Shall we just open the door? No, this was a rehearsal run. Oh. So this was on Earth. Oh. This was on Earth inside. I guess I didn't go over this clearly. They were inside of, a, of the capsule that they would have been in if they were uh, actually coming back from the moon or actually going to the moon and coming back from the moon in what they would basically be living in. This is the capsule that started fire, but it was in a warehouse on a military base that this happened. Okay, good to set set the surroundings for us. Thank you. Yes, I I forgot to do that. I apologize. But yes, this happened in a military base under NASA regulations, everything like that. That's why it makes this suspicious. Another thing that makes this suspicious, there's a theory out there that Gus Grissom was going to blow the whistle on NASA and their plan to fake the moon landing, and he coincidentally died in that fire along with two others. they managed to convince him to go along with it, so... Yeah, it, he was actually... Hey, you're our biggest skeptic. We're going to stick you on this ride, shall we? There was things he was... If he was on Twitter or Facebook back then, he would have gotten his ass canned because there's he was taking pictures of stuff like you hung a lemon on a hanger right over the door of the capsule saying that it was a lemon, that it was a piece of shit. Yep. Basically calling out NASA for their bullshit. That's one of the reasons, you know, there was a documentary that we watched last night that... They showed that. So that's one of the theories. So we're going to go over, we're going to go over pretty much all the theories. I feel like my pretty drawing. Very pretty, babe. <laughs> Very pretty. <laughs> the heart and the middle finger. <laughs> all right. In 2017, on the 50th anniversary of this incident, NASA conducted a ceremony for the families of the victims. 
which it took them 50 years to do it, but at least I will say that was actually kind of cool of NASA to actually come out and say, hey, we fucked up. We're really sorry. We killed him. We're really sorry. 